Kia ora. Thank you for this. Um, it seemed like Kingi Tuhaitia was on a roll in his last year. What do you put that down to? I really think that he, because um, he's been struggling with his health for a while, but I think that he got a bit of a, a wairua wind. Uh, and after the 160-year celebration of the Kingitanga last year, it was actually the Motu's request that how do we come together in this sort of day and age where we're facing attacks and things mm. like that. So I think he got a bit of a wide when they called the Huya Motu. And then we didn't think that it would be that successful. We were planning, huge, for, eh? we were planning for 7,000 and more than 12 uh, came through. Uh, and then the snowball effect that that's had has been absolutely fantastic. There's been um, the air of Kotahitanga and the wairua of Kotahitanga. And who cares about the government? Let's just focus on us. And I think that was the wairua win that he, uh, epiphany that he had. Yeah, it, it kind of like everyone feels kind of felt very motivated. I think also just bringing people together, they felt like, yeah, it's not just me that's feeling kind of traumatised, eh? Yeah, I, kinda... I, it, it, it was, it's really a, a, a feeling. It's a way to a feeling amongst the young ones and the old ones. And that's the beauty about it. it does, you know, uh, it, it doesn't matter what age you are, it doesn't matter what gender you are, it doesn't matter where you live, there was a place for everyone in Kutahitanga. So we've had lots of hui. What is the what is the action to come out of those, do you think? Because people are feeling amped, but there's still um, a need for some actions or strategies. Yeah. What are you hearing and seeing? So we're going to uphold King Tuhetia's corridor in January about letting the four winds speak, and the Ngaitahu hui is still to come in October. Post that, there will be discussions around strategies based on the corridor that is, because there's been some wonderful corridor at yeah. Ngāiwa here at Rātana, at Waitangi, at Omahu and Kahumunu, uh, in different places, and now uh, with Ngaitahu. And we just need to find a way to bring those together and make and create a strategy of mana motuhake or a pathway to mana motuhake that everyone can embrace. And, and it, it's not to usurp anybody or to uh, be big brotherish over anybody, because that Ngāti will have their way, and this Ngāti will have their way, and that tribe will have their way, and that hapū will have their way. But there may be some commonalities where we can continue to walk together. Mm. So. Can you just explain also um, what you see as the historical role of Kingitanga and its relevance now? So there were three um, premises to the establishment of the Kingitanga. At the time, they were facing uh, land, uh, crooked land sales and all of that sort of stuff. So one of them was Pupurui Te Whenua, to hold fast to the land. That means in today's context that we have to uh, blanket our mana and hapu mana uh, over uh, the various lands that, that we have. It doesn't matter whether those has been confiscated or, or sold or whatever, the blanket of mana over that area uh, has to be uh, part and parcel of that. One of them is to pupurui te whenua, pupurui te mana Māori motuhake, to do things in our way and in, in the way that we want to determine. That hasn't changed. Hey. It's had different challenges and different faces over the uh, over the generations, but the, the principle hasn't changed. And the other one was to pupurui te toto, so uh, to cease the infighting amongst Māori. We know uh, that that has caused difficulties over the generations, but part and parcel of the Kingitanga uh, mantra uh, is to bring people together in, a, in the spirit of kutahitanga and to fight on a national and international basis when, when it's required. Mm. So, to Haiti like to travel, and what did that? What were the benefits of that? What What did you get out of that? The benefits of that was uh, stronger relationships. Like uh, just a couple of or just before COVID, we visited Rome, and he was only the second Maori um, uh, head of the Kingitanga to visit. Te Nui uh, had visited in 1975, uh, and so he was addressed by the Pope. The Pope at the time. He was supposed to have a 15 minute window. And when the sort of staff come in to uh, say, oh, you know, let's wrap this up, he just kept waving them off and they spent uh, quite a number of times with them. Uh, the, the, um, uh, the emperor of Japan, for example, came here when Teddy Kinui hosted him. Uh, and when he went over, the same sort of thing. I think they just want to be, to be reconnected. And he, was, and he was an excellent person at that. Prince Charles, now King Charles, Hey, they, they, they talked on the phone just about every month. 
and, and just talked about things, you know, and uh, it's just that relationship building. And when he went over to places, it was always to uh, make contact with the people of that whenua mm. uh, and the people, um, you know, to, to forge relationships with them. That's the benefits that well, we've seen. Was, it, was there something about him that meant that he was able to do that easier? What do I you think, think? I think he took a, a leaf from his mother's book. His mother was very engaging. So she would sit with the kaumatu on the pai pai and hop on the floor and play knuckle bones with the kohanga reo children. And then sit on the maho with a prince or a president or whatever and whatever. Very, very easy to engage with. And I think uh, Kini Tuhetia was a real uh, sort of um, a, a person that was a worker and, and just wanted to just wanted to be himself without the ears and graces of that sort of, sort of position. At times he knew he had to do that, but in the majority of the time, he just wanted to be to hate the other person. Was, it, was he uncomfortable with that kind of, the sort of the ritual and the, you know, he's sit over here and you know, that stuff? To start off with, yeah. yeah. But, but they all were according to uh, the old people. Yeah, he was a bit uncomfortable at first, but he grew into his role. And he knew at times he had to do that, and at times he could just get rid of all the ears and graces and just be himself. Uh, he could, uh, his happy place was his shed, uh, you know, in, in this tool shed and doing things like that, fixing mowers and, uh, and in his digger and, and things like that, because he was a, a real hands-on uh, type worker. Um, can you tell me about the relationship between um, uh, Kingi Tanga and um, the Ariki Tanga of Tuparito? Actually, uh, the, the relationship stems back way before the Kingi Tanga. There was that relationship, and actually, Dawa Waikato is the, as we call it, an umbilical cord that starts with the Kahui Mauna and ends up at Tangaroan. Uh, and so that relationship has always been. We talk about Pongariro and Taupiri being uh, like brother and sister uh, as they were growing up and then Taupiri coming up here to marry her husband, but never ever got rid of that relationship. And so that set the foundation for when the Te Heu Heu dynasty started and the Te Whero Whero dynasty started. And, and uh, you know, Hinana Kiuta and Hinana Kitai on the shores of uh, Lake Taupo, Lake Pukawa, uh, that was a pivotal, well, that, that was actually the genesis uh, of the modern day Kingitanga that we know. Um, and then every ariki since then, but especially, uh, especially to my mind, uh, when uh, Sir Hepi uh, and Teata uh, and Te Reo Hura from yes. Ratana, uh, for example, yeah. just they were always and, together, right? They eh? were always yeah. together, mm. and, it, and it was beautiful to mm. see actually mm. the Ratana celebrations with them three sitting together, mm. and the government coming on. They must have been in awe of yeah. the leadership of Māori at that time. Yeah. Yeah, and then I always used to see Tumu as well with Te Ata. Tumu, uh, Timi, uh, Timi Te Heu Heu, um, you know, all of the family. So we had uh, at least two of the sisters here on the marae today, uh, alongside Tumu. And it was, and it's beautiful to see because that, that real family uh, sort of dynamic, uh, and it was sad when we attended the funeral of Johnny Te Heu Heu, because he was one of, hippie, he was one of hippie, hippie's main drivers. Uh, to the various kaupapa and sitting out the back and having a coffee and having a chin wing. What's happening in uh, Tupere Toy and what's happening in Waikato? And, uh, My know. lips are sealed. <laughs> All yeah. those sorts of things. Yeah, and I sort of, I, to me, it seemed like to Haiti and Timu, there was something similar in the fact that they, they weren't exactly racing for the job. Neither of them, eh? Yeah, a little bit of humble, kind of like, oh. You know, when I spoke to Timu about that, I did an interview with him. And, he just said he got the offer that he couldn't refuse. <laughs> well, that's it. So um, even though, um, you know, to hate you, uh, really, no, I'm, I, I'm thinking that he didn't even uh, want the job, but when the motu uh, made their decision, how can you, how can you say no, really? They're, they're, it's their tonga. The kingitanga is the tongue of the motu, and Tainui's job is just to be a manakitanga caretaker. And it has global outreach, as we've mentioned, uh, it has those international networks. It, um, it's respected in the, the corridors of power here. We see all the different politicians come. Do you think it'll, it'll grow and evolve or, or what? Yeah, I think so, because one of the focuses of Kingi to Haitia, and actually it's something that we've adopted uh, across uh, Tainui uh, and actually around the Motu, 
uh, is the inclusion of rangatahi. So we've, we've had rangatahi on the pipe pipe. We've had rangat yes. We have rangatahi in the kitchen. We have rangatahi in the dungeon buttering the bread. We have rangatahi all over the place, in the media, uh, for example. Uh, all over the marae at this tangihanga, there is a rangatahi focus as well. Not to push away the kaumatua, but to be there to support them and uh, augment their, uh, their mahi. And so that's the longevity. That's going to be the legacy uh, of the kingitanga is the inclusiveness of rangata. Mm. you still got a bit of... Um Work to do though, Rahui. You're not signing off anytime soon, are you? Oh, I'm still doing it to myself, to be honest. Alrighty. Did you see him? Um, like, how did he deal with conflict or tension? In various ways, actually. So um, he had people around him that would be able to uh, give advice and mm. things like that. And not only uh, within Tainui, he would visit uh, people in Tauranga, uh, people in Tuwhiritua, uh, people in Tamaki. Uh, and, and just talk things through. King Tuhetia was a bit of a deep thinker and a very considerate thinker. So I, one, of the, uh, one of the memories I have is, uh, you know, there were some issues that were facing both the King Tanga and Waikato at the time. And he just sat on the, um, on the grass outside, Makatu Marae, looking at Kafia Moana and gazing into the waves. And then really got a, a wave of, sorry, excuse the pun, but a wave of inspiration. And, and came up with these ideas that actually resolved the issue. So he was a very considerate, and sometimes it took a while, uh, but uh, more often than not, there were, uh, there were people giving advice and he would mull it over uh, and then make his determination for mm. the people. But always, the lit his litmus test was, will it be good for the people? Because if it's not good for the people, then we ain't doing it. Mm -hmm. Must be, um, uh a sad time for the Fano, especially as um, fathers with Father's Day and things like that. How are they coping? He loved his children and he loved his mokopuna. And, and actually, um, his rock was Te mm. uh, She was the she was his rock. She she was able to listen to the most intimate thoughts uh, mm. of the king. And to do that and then have to hold it without sort of sharing until he was ready. Um, yeah, she was his. Uh, she was and is uh, his rock, and his tamariki and his mukupuna absolutely adored their father and their grandfather. Um, he would he would go out of his way. So, uh, if the mukupuna woke up at three o'clock in the morning and wanted an ice cream, he would go to McDonald's to get them an ice cream. Is he, was he one of those ones? Yeah, you can't, can't say no to your mukupuna. <laughs> oh, oh, kia ora. thank you, Rahui. <laughs>